Everybody knows that Feraligator goes crazy as a physical attacker, and that's what's expected 100% of the time. But, I'm gonna make it a B special sweeper. It's only got base 79 special attack, which isn't great. However, its ability Sheer Force gives it a 30% boost to any moves with a secondary effect. Hear me out, this means that Stab Muddy Water becomes super strong while also having the benefit of everybody in the world expecting a physical move. We can set up an agility to double our speed, and coverage with things like Sheer Force boosted Ice Beams along with Terra Blast Electric can definitely be clutch. The Life Orb held item gives us an extra 30% boost to all attacks, and we don't even take recoil damage when it's used along with Sheer Force. Special for Alligator is a wild way to catch people off guard, and it can actually be kinda good. So the problem with Feraligator is the thing's kind of just a one-trick pony, until now. I really like taking Pokemon and making them do stuff that they're not supposed to, and if you're into that kind of thing, you should probably hit that subscribe button. I'm on my way to 400k, I'd love to have you as part of the journey, and with that, let's go ahead and jump into the match. Alright, so my dude's gonna go ahead and lead off with the wooden orb. We're gonna ponder him for a second, and then I'm like, hey, I also have an orb, kinda. I got the fortress here as a lead. And at this point, I imagine they probably just go for the pivot. I'm going to take this opportunity to just lay down some little stealth rock over there. So it turns out they're just going to go right for the Thunderbolt, does a whole bunch of damage, and in the process, activates the old red card, which is nice because now it's just going to drag in a random team member that they have to kind of just switch into. And Fortress is like, yeah, take, take that. Just out here stirring stuff up as a nice little walnut. So it actually ends up bringing out the little jelly fella. And Reuniclus is kind of a threat. I, don't really want to stay in here because a lot of the time these are going to set up with things like calm mind so i decided to switch into the polytoad for a couple different reasons first of all getting up rain on this team is really nice synergy and also i have a little little froggy trick up my sleeve so i do make it extra moist out here with the drizzle and they actually end up going for the knockoff which is going to get rid of my damp rock however i did already get the rain up so it's going to stay up for the eight turns and at this point, I'm still worried about this thing potentially going for some setup. So I decided to go for the Paris Song, which is going to kind of limit what this thing can do. It's going to stir it up, make it kind of force some switches later on. So as they end up going for the Psychic, does a nice little chunk with a crit there. And now the song is, is ticking. We sing such a shitty song that you literally die in three turns when you're hearing it. So at this point, I decide I'm going to go into the Rotom Mo here. I, I, I figure... It's kind of a decent option for me to grab a position because I can bring this thing in, I know I can take an attack, and I feel like they probably are going to end up switching eventually, which is going to give me the opportunity to kind of volt switch. So as I come in, I actually take more from a psychic than I kind of expect. After leftovers, I'm like above half, but at this point I'm like, you know, I the count falls to two on the guy. They probably don't switch here, but I'm going to go for a volt switch regardless, as I know I'm going to be faster, give myself a little bit of chip, and as I'm looking at it here, they probably just click Psychic again, or something like the knockoff. So, I realize, you know what, I'm just going to bring in the Gator. These things, count's going to fall to one, and then I can try to grab myself a nice little little setup here. So, they do end up going for the Psychic, which is going to hurt. And it is going to be a two-hit KO, especially with the special defense drop. However, they know that next turn, if they decide to stay in here, the Reuniclus goes down. So, I make a nice little read here. I'm going to go for the agility expecting the switch. And that's exactly what happens, which, thank God. And now, the Gator is about to get real fast, real quick. So, they actually end up switching into the Slowbro, which is funny because, obviously, that's a pretty decent answer to a physical for Alligator. And as I go for the agility, they're still not really sure what to expect in terms of what, you know, this Gator is going to do. So, I now have doubled speed. I'm literally faster than their entire team at this point. And I also can bust out the secret weapon in the form of the Terra Electric. So... The thing about it is, if this was a physical for Alligator, it's not going to be able to do too much to the uh, to the Slowbro here. However, I do have the benefit of this basically being a special attack, and also, it's still masked under the fact that they don't know if this Terror Blast is physical or special. So, I bust out the light bulb on the damn head, looking ridiculous. However, the Terror Blast comes in, and that actually just roasts and toasts the guy. We do end up getting a crit, but that's going to knock out the Slowbro, and now a physical defense wall is gone. And also, they don't know what we got working with the Feraligator. So, important to note, you do actually take Life Orb Chip when you use a move that doesn't have a secondary effect, like the Terror Blast. And as they end up bringing in the Metacham here, even if this thing is Choice Scarf, which it most likely is, I am going to be faster because I have that young doubled speed. So, I can now throw a little bit of sewage water at him with that rain boost, with the Sheer Force, with the Life Orb. 
that is easily going to take care of the Metacham. And <laughs> that is amazing. So here's where it actually gets extra interesting because as they go into the Hisuian Electrode, this little fella is fast. He's freaking aerodynamic as hell, but not faster than these butt cheeks. I can actually outspeed with the doubled speed. Fun fact, Modest for Alligator is faster than a timid Hisuian Electrode. Kind of, kind of crazy, but obviously the Ice Beam is going to be able to take it out there and the Feraligator out here going on a, a nice little tear. We are in fact making Steve Irwin proud with the Croc over here, and now they decide to go into the uh, freaking Poltegeist. And this is some ghostly tea that is a little bit of a problem, because as my rain did run out, I can go for the Muddy Water, but it's not quite enough to knock this thing out. However, they actually just decide to go for the Strength Sap, which is kind of unfortunate because while you know, I do have enough physical attack to the point where that Strength Sap actually just gets it right back to full, and I'm like, well, it's kind of been a miracle that I've been able to hit this many Muddy Waters in a row, but I go for another one, throw some more brown water at him, and it does end up living, except they end up going for the Shell Smash, which is actually good for me because while <laughs> Poltegeist is now, you know, Shell broken as hell, gonna be pretty damn quick, I, after an agility, Feraligator is still faster. So this thing gets plus two speed. I am at plus two speed as well. Except the Feraligator is just still naturally faster. We are freaking, we're a gator over here. So I can now, I decide to go for the Terra Blast as I do outspeed. And the Terra Blast is basically there just because I don't want to miss. And uh, it ends up taking care of the T. And uh, once again, Feraligator doing stuff it's not supposed to. Agility is honestly a broken move. Being able to double your speed Makes it faster than a lot more than you'd think. So that takes care of that. And at this point, we've broken so many holes in the squad that we're feeling pretty confident. So now as they decide to go back into the Reuniclus here, I have two Pokemon left. I'm just going to continue to throw Muddy Waters. I do connect with that 85 accuracy, and it's unfortunately just not enough to be able to take this thing out. So now that allows them to fire off a Psychic, and it does take out the Feraligator. But not before we were able to poke some holes into the team. Now we've got a little bit of work cut out for us, but honestly... You're not that scared. So, we've got a lot of chip on the Reuniclus. I can decide to pretty much go into whatever. I'm actually going to end up bringing in the Frog because this team also has some more rain synergy. And uh, as I did lose my Damp Rock, we're still going to come out here and make it nice and moist. So, I get that Drizzle. And at this point, their final Pokemon in the back is going to be the Snorlax. So, rather than just going for the Weather Ball here, I kind of expect the switch. So, I'm actually going to go for the Paris Song, which is going to obviously just make things a little bit interesting. So, they actually end up staying in, however. And they do finish me off with a Psychic here. But at least, you know, I got the Paris Song up, which is going to at least just force a switch. But at this point, all I really need to do is bust out the Water Wings. I've got the Floatzel. This thing's Parish Count falls to three. And I am going to go into Choice Banded Swift Swim. Floatzel in the rain is an absolute monster with wave, with wave Crash. This thing is literally insane. I'm obviously faster than everything by like 500. I can go for the Wave Crash here. That is going to take care of the Reuniclus. And now with the final Mon being left, uh, being the Snorlax with mostly special bulk, we should be pretty fine here, especially with that Choice Band, Rain boosting the Wave Crash. This thing is about to go ride in some waves that he's not going to soon recover from. So, in comes the big old Snorlax. This thing is ready to take a nice little nap, and we're going to try to give him a, a, watery, a watery nap uh, of sorts. So, I just go for that Wave Crash, and here's the thing, it actually ends up living. Just barely somehow, which does give him a little bit of a snack. It is going to end up busting out the Citrus Berry, which doesn't really matter in the long run. We've got enough chip at this point, and they actually can now go for the Body Slam, and it actually does take care of me because that thing is bad as hell. So down goes the Float Soul, surprisingly. However, I have my secret weapon left, and that is our dude Whiskash. I've got freaking Wario over here who looks like he's just here to have a good time. He's just happy to be included. And He's extra happy to be included because I can just go for a nice little rain boosted liquidation and grab the, the final kill from our, our, our little friend here who literally tries his best. I'm working with Dragon Dance Whiskash because it seems hilarious if I can get it to be pulled off. So they're actually going to end up going for the Terra Normal, which doesn't really change anything defensively for them. And a liquidation is going to be able to knock it out. So that's going to be a dead Snorlax and effectively going to be the end of the match. And so that was kind of just a fun, goofy game that got to showcase the special gator doing some nonsense and uh, had some, some fun with that one. So, listen, that's going to actually end up bringing us into game number two because we are not freaking done yet. So, hey, if you're sticking around and you enjoyed the video so far, make sure to hit that like button for me. It really does help out the channel. And with that, let's get into match number two. So this time, my dude is dripped out and going to end up leading off with the Alaskan Bullworm. Orthworm comes in here, which 
is a bit of a threat, and I, of course, have the dedicated lead in the form of the walnut here. He's a wall, he's a nut, and this thing's here to party and also, you know, set up some stealth rock and also potentially rapid spin some away. So, as they are faster, they're gonna go for the stealth rock turn one. And then I'm like, hey, I'm also gonna be laying down some little minion rocks as well. We just kind of compare sizes, and mine are looking a little bit bigger. So at this point, I'm kind of free to potentially go for a rapid spin, but it's like there's nothing really stopping them from just setting them back up again, because I don't have too much offensive pressure here, but as they go for the Iron Tail, it's actually gonna end up missing. So that allows me to go for that rapid spin, gets rid of the rocks, and as I'm looking at it here, I don't have really much reason to stay in here. I, I don't pressure this thing at all offensively, and I would kind of like to keep that red card intact. Plus, if they're going to go for an earthquake or anything like that, I can just go right into the Politoed, get this rain party freaking started. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. We bring in the bubblegum, but he's got his one hair on the top of his head just bouncing around. And uh, of course, we are going to make it nice and wet. So they actually do connect on an Iron Tail this time. Does nothing because I do resist it, but also I always forget that Iron Tail is like 100 base power. It's kind of ridiculous. Uh, it does get the drop, but however, I am going to be faster at this point, and I can just go ahead and throw some nice little weather balls out at him. I obviously can't earth power because this thing's going to eat it, but a weather ball boosted by the rain is going to do a lot of damage to everything. This thing it, it hits way harder than you'd expect, and the earthworm just straight up goes down, which is amazing. So with that thing gone, we don't have to worry about Stealth Rock being set up, which is good for our Sturdy being intact on things like the Fortress, and it doesn't punish our switches like at all. So. What is going to punish me is this guy in his friggin' drum set. He really boom comes in, sets up the grappy, gra <laughs> the grappy, the grassy surge, and this thing is obviously going to be doing some destruction here. So it actually ends up having the uh, grassy seed, which does give it a defensive boost on touching the freaking grass over there. And then I'm like, you know what? I don't want you to have that freaking defense boost. So I'm going to go right into the fortress where I know that I can not only take attacks, but also as soon as it touches me, it's going to be able to you know, force it out with that red card. So they do glide in a grassy fashion, which obviously doesn't do much. It breaks my sturdy, but then I'm like, hey, actually, that's a foul. Blow the whistle, and red card is going to force it out into something random, which is always nice just to, I like to mix things up. So it actually ends up bringing in this little fella. And Mudsdale is kind of a problem because this thing is a crazy defense wall. But as I'm looking at it here, I'm like, you know, Fortress can't really touch this thing. I imagine they probably have just ground coverage they're going to go for here. And I'm like, you know, maybe I bring in Feraligator and I can potentially take two and try to set up on this thing. And hitting it on the special side with Feraligator would be extremely satisfying. So I just make the Hail Mary and switch directly into the Feraligator because I'm like, I need to try to use these rain turns. And as they end up going for the high horsepower, a horseshoe right to the face, it hurts a lot. The reason why they click high horsepower is because Earthquake is reduced in damage by the grassy terrain. So at this point, I figure, you know, maybe they actually end up switching here. I'm going to go for a Hail Mary agility once again. And they do not want that Mudsdale to take a rain boosted attack. So they actually end up switching into the Quaqua Vault. And that is actually kind of nice because as I go for the agility, I am now the superior water starter and also far faster. So I have now doubled my speed. We're also getting the benefit of the little bit of heals you know, from the grassy terrain, which is nice. And while I can't really touch this thing with anything natural, I can go for the Terra Electric and already you already know, do some Terra Blast freaking nonsense. So Terra Blast Electric is, is nice because a lot of the time people will try to switch in things like Corviknight versus this for Alligator, you know, because of a physical wall. However, having a special electric attack is super nice. So I go for that Terra Blast here. I'm obviously going to be able to outspeed. And this dancing peacock is going to be able to dance his way into the underworld because that actually just straight up ends up taking it out. And that is going to be a dead fellow. So I've committed the Terra at this point, but the gator is zooming and we're at a pretty good position here to do a lot of damage to, you know, pretty much everything. So we are still chilling at about half HP thanks to the grassy terrain. And at this point, they decide to go back into the Rillaboom. So the thing is, obviously, we know this thing has the priority option with the grassy glide. And as they are going to go for it, for Alli I live with 5 HP. I was like, maybe I actually live this. Somehow I do. It allows me to fire off an Ice Beam. And that is going to end up knocking out the Gator, or the, 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 the Rillaboom. And for Alligator is going where no Gator has gone before, which is insane. So, <laughs> All right. What is bad news is the rain is really nice for me. And when this thing comes in, Alone the Ninetales turns it into freaking snow. It, it just got significantly colder. And the problem is now I don't get the rain boost with my muddy water, except I am at least going to be able to be faster. So I can throw a muddy water at him. I do connect and it just barely is able to live, which is unfortunate. Allows him to fire off a freeze dry 
and that is going to knock out the gator. So if I still had my rain up, that would have been enough to kill, or just a little bit of extra chip there. Except if Relegator has broken a nice little hole in the team once again, and I've still got some pretty big threats to try to deal with this. So I can go into the Politoed here, which can switch it back over to rain on my end, which is also good because that means this thing can no longer then go for you know things like an Aurora Veil. And if they want to just freeze dry the Politoed, I'm kind of fine with that because they have half their team left. And then that kind of opens the door for me to just bring in the Floatzel. So I just decided to go ahead and throw a Weather Ball here. If they want to switch, that's fine. They are just actually going to end up going for that Freeze Dry, which we actually take super nicely. And a Weather Ball is... It's kind of funny throwing Weather Balls at the dude that does weather shit. But that takes care of the Alolan Ninetales, which is solid because now they have two Pokemon left. So here's the deal. They're working with a Grafii and obviously the Mudsdale in the back. So they decide to bring in the Grafii here. And Politoed has taken enough damage at this point to where it can likely just end up knocking me out. But as long as the rain is up, we are in a pretty good spot here. So, I just decide to go ahead and click the Weather Ball as it's more effective than a super effective Earth Power. But the Poison Jab with a little weird painted finger, he just straight up ETs me. And that is going to knock out the Toad. But that is fine, because now the door is wide open for the Water Wings to come in and do some Water Wings nonsense. Floatzel is one of my favorite Sinomons. I'm actually really glad that this thing is super good now. So I can go into the Floatzel here, and a Wave Crash just absolutely obliterates the fellow. So now the final Mon is going to be that Mudsdale, and as long as this thing does not have any stamina boosts, it's looking like a Wave Crash in the rain with the Choice Band. Still should be able to knock this thing out. I also, if I didn't already use my Terra, I have Terra Water on this thing just for overkill, but I'm going to go for that Wave Crash. It turns out they are going to go ahead and commit the Terra here. I'm like, oh, is it going to be a defensive Terra? Turns out to just be Terra Ground, so Buddy puts the bowl cut on his head. Still going to be just weak to this uh, <laughs> to this wave crash, you know, which is fine. And Mudsdale, in his, in his little little boots over there, is going to get his ass crashed into the shore. So wave crash is going to finish off the match. And uh, Floatzel is really good on this team for doing kind of late game sweeps and cleanups, which is fun. So that is going to be the end of the game. And I thought that was just uh, another kind of just goofy one. So... With that, you may be thinking we're done, except we are absolutely not. I've got one more bonus match for you, if you're into that kind of thing, and uh, let's get into it. Alright, so this time, Buddy's going to go ahead and lead off with the Sandy Shocks, and this thing's looking punk rock as hell. I, of course, have the Walnut. Sue me. This thing's a dedicated lead, and I'm out here just to set up some rocks and be annoying. That's exactly what I'm going to do. I kind of imagine that's what they're going to do, except... As they end up going for the Zap Cannon, it, I'm like, don't do it. It's freaking Blunder Policy Zap Cannon. Which now is going to go ahead and sharply boost this thing's speed, which is kind of damn ridiculous. And as I set up my Stealth Rock, I'm like, hey, that's fine. Because I literally, I have Sturdy, I have a red card, I know that I can live and attack here and just force him to switch. And then use up that, uh, that Blunder policy. So, they actually do go for the Electro Ball now here, which is kind of a crazy pairing with having doubled speed. I do obviously live it with that Sturdy, I'm a Sturdy boy. And that's going to activate the red card and force him to switch out. So... Blunder Policy and Zap Cannon is a crazy pairing. Just because if you connect on the Zap Cannon, it's pretty nice. And then if you miss, it's also pretty nice. So this actually ends up drawing in the Petra Runt, which it's an annoying little fella. I get off a nice little Gyro Ball to do pretty much nothing to it. And then I die to the Rocky Helmet. So that was an entire sequence of held items doing some nonsense. And I'm kind of here for it. So Walnut does go down, but we wasted the Blunder Policy on the Sandy Shocks. And now at least I know what I want to switch into on the Petra run. So I decided to go into the Politoed, again, just because I want to try to get that rain up. And also, you know, Weather Ball does a lot. I know that I can take an attack from this thing. And Politoed, again, is here to look like a toddler to say I threw up in the middle of the night. And they actually end up going for the Protect here, which is kind of annoying because that just burns a turn of my rain and then gives them, like, more recovery. But I Weather Ball the Protect, and I'm like, okay, what, are we, what are we doing here, bro? The Protect for the scout it actually didn't have leftovers or black sludge anyway i'm just going to continue to throw some more weather balls here as they actually end up going for the nasty plot so nasty plot on the petra run is a bit scary doubles the special attack there but i know that this weather ball is going to do a lot of damage and it actually just barely ends up living with like 20 hp so now i know this thing's going to be able to hit me with a pretty hard malignant chain but the good i should be able to take like at least one attack here i don't have a whole lot that wants to switch into this so I'm like, well, Politoed, it's it's time. They do go for the Malignant Chain here. It wraps me up in some crazy mochi or whatever. And does not end up getting the Poison paired with the Poison Puppeteer, which is amazing. And then I can finish it off 
with a, another weather ball. So down goes the Petra run. That thing could be a freaking menace. And it, it's good to see that thing gone. So now they get the revenge switch. They can freely go into whatever they would like. And they're going to go right back into Sandy Shocks, who does not have the ability to blunder. And we also know what kind of coverage this thing's working with. So I figure if they want to go for whatever, they can end up knocking me out. And then I can get myself uh, a switch here. So they're actually going to end up going for the Terra. And... I kind of thought it was going to be like an offensive Terra. It turns out it's going to be Terra Ice. So that means that they probably maybe think that they're going to go ahead and miss the attack here. And then they don't want to die to a Weather Ball. So now they have the ability to like defensively take an attack. But then they just click Thunderbolt, which it can miss. And so I don't know what the Terra Ice was for. Unless they thought that I was going to go for a Terra of my own. So that takes care of the Politoed. And at this point, I'm going to go, I'm, I'm going to go into the Feraligator. I'm looking at this thing thinking I can easily bait them. Uh, to just go for another Thunderbolt, but he's got all the electric coverage in the damn world on this guy, and I can also just now go for the Terra. I am going to go for the Terra Electric and then set up an agility, because as I'm looking at it, once again, as soon as Feraligator has that doubled speed, it does so much, especially with rain boosts on the muddy water. So, I go for that Terra Electric Light Bulb on the damn head. We know we can take any attack that this thing wants to throw at us. They are going to go for the Zap Cannon and actually connect which is unfortunate, but it doesn't do a whole lot to us. And now, we are feeling agile as hell. I go for that agility, raise that speed sharply, and uh, at this point, I can just go for a Muddy Water being faster, and check this out, boosted in the rain, that just straight up kills the Sandy Shock. So with that, that's also gonna take care of their option to Terra, which is uh, amazing for us. So now there's no crazy you know, defensive Terras and shenanigans in the back. And now we get to see whatever they wanna deal with uh, in terms of the gator. So they actually end up going into the mouse hold. And I'm thinking to myself, this thing, I mean, this is fine. I can just outspeed easily, go for a muddy water, and just drown the little family in some gross muddy water. <laughs> that takes care of the mouse hold. And uh, I don't know if people just underestimate the agility gator or what, but we're doing a ton of damage here. And it's also just so fun you don't take that life orb chip when, it has, when it's a move that has a secondary effect. So now they decide to bring in the Wo Qian. And, the interesting part about this guy is that uh, we don't care about our physical attack being dampened because I can go for the ice beam coverage as it does live it nicely. It, it then fires off a foul play and since I'm not fully physical, I actually live the foul, foul play which is kind of just a fun interaction and like a nice little benefit of this thing being special at least uh, at this point. And now another ice beam just kills the guy. So I'm thinking they probably just stay in. They do go for a protect uh, again. Got guys just protect using hella protection out here which is advised. However, he's just basically going to give it another turn of leftover recovery, and my rain is already gone anyway, so muddy waters aren't going to do as much as, you know, they potentially could, except I'm just here for a good time, not a long time, to try to do as much as I can with this gator, and I'm just going to go for that next ice beam. But, they actually end up switching out here, they're going to save the, <laughs> the Wochi end for later, and they're actually going to end up bringing in the Fluttermain. And here's what's interesting, Fluttermain comes in it is going to go ahead and activate a booster energy. So I'm thinking, kind of probably going to be speed. Turns out to be special defense. Getting exact, plus special defense on the Flutter main, which allows it to take this Ice Beam extremely nicely. And then while I know that I'm still going to be faster, now it just comes down to, can Muddy Water do enough? No, it cannot, because special defensive boosted Flutter main is able to live and kill me with the Moon Blast. So, this game is damn ridiculous, and down goes the Gator. But we were still able to do some nonsense, and that's what we're here to do. So, Fluttermain with a special defense boost is kind of scary, but like mostly fine. I can just end up going into the Rotom Mo here. The bad thing is I don't have the ability to set back up my rain for my Floatzel, and my other rain fellas are going to be a little bit struggling in the back. But I go into the Rotom here just because I know that I can take... You know, any attack this thing wants to throw at me. And the Shadow Ball is going to be a two-hit KO. However, a Thunderbolt does just finish off the uh, the Flutter main. So the chip that I got there with the Feraligator comes in extremely clutch. Because Feraligator is a damn threat. And after some leftover recovery, you know, we're chilling still, like, above half. Now they've got two Mons left. It is going to be the fake old Pikachu Mimikyu. And then they have the Wo Chen over there. So they decide to go into the Mimikyu here, who is looking extra spooky with his, with his crazy Pikachu hat. And main idea here is to break this thing's disguise. So they actually end up going for the play rough, which I actually end up living. And my game also breaks on the left side. For some reason, this always happens to me. I truly don't understand. So I live the play rough, which is great, because then I can just go for that bolt switch. 
which breaks the disguise, which is fantastic. And now I can go into, you know, whatever I want. And what I mostly want is Whiskash to be able to do some stuff. I should be relatively bulky enough to take some attacks here as long as this thing doesn't have swords dances. And boy would I love if my left side of my game would come back here. But they end up going for the substitute here, which is kind of fine because it just it knocked out some of the HP. And then I can just end up breaking up with the Earthquake here. So my ass is not going to be Dragon Dances any, anytime soon. I imagine they have the Swords Dance and then some Play Roughs after some boosts would be kind of scary. And I mainly just need to kind of keep my win condition in the form of the Float Soul in, in the back there. Because as they go for the Play Rough, I am able to take two of them, which is great. And then I fire off an Earthquake that does take care of the Mimikyu. And I'm like, holy shit, can Whiskash finish off the match for us? Would actually be kind of clutch. The problem becomes that I can't really touch the freaking grass snail weird guy. What the hell even is Wo Chien? I, I don't know. He, can't, he thinks he's going to come in with his weird little spiral crazy shell. And don't worry, the left side of the game does come back eventually. It's when like the scene sets to... I don't know, showing both of the trainers, it, it, it turns black for me, I don't know, but all I can really do here is just go for Earthquake. I actually, my best bet might have just been to go for like a neutral, uh, non-boosted Terror Blast, um, and I kind of just thought they were going to end up knocking me out here. They go for the Foul Play, which I can actually live because Wo, Wo Chien hits like a damn wet paper towel, and <laughs> after some leftovers, I'm like, alright, I die to another Foul Play. My win condition at this point has been conserving the Floatzel because I do have the Ice Coverage on the water wings. So that's basically the plan. I'm going to continue to fire off wet noodle earthquakes at this point and just do as much as I can. But they end up protecting because this guy just wants to see the world burn. And it's like, dude, you're not... I don't understand. The protect doesn't really do anything here. And then just gives him another leftovers turn, which is like basically how much my earthquakes do. And guess what? I'm going to go ahead and save you some time here. A foul play kills me. This thing is on low health. All I got to do is ice spinner him with the floatzel. And that is going to be the end of the match. So I had some fun with it today, messing around with using some mons in different ways. If you have any ideas of ways that I can use like known physical attack attackers as special attackers or vice versa, go ahead and let me know because it seems kind of fun. And with that, I will catch you guys next time. Peace out.